Okay, verse 7 uh, reads, And at that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Verse 8, Were the Ethiopians and Lubim, not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen. Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. Verse 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly, therefore from now on you shall have wars. Verse 10 then says, Then Asa was angry with the seer, and put him in prison, for he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. Verse 9 reads, I want to read it for your attention so that you can have it. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. Read verse 9 with me when you, when you have it in your in your Bible it says for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him in this you have done foolishly therefore from now on you shall have wars I want to talk to you from the subject entitled this morning never underestimate being faithful never underestimate being faithful like we are on week four of vision month and as we do every year vision month is the time where we give you the word of the lord and it's the time where we seek god for direction on what he will want us to do in this year what is he calling of us it is not that we just take the moment to say god do this for us we want god to show us what he wants to accomplish in us this year Last week, I talked to you about knowing, not underestimating, never underestimate knowing Jesus and how it is important that our relationship be rooted in trust in him. As I've been telling you this whole series about never underestimate, some things, before I go there, about never underestimate, God clearly told me, he said, that the reason why some people underestimate because they don't know me. And so I'm believing that you, need, you and I need to take some time to reflect and see where in our relationship with God where is though we're underestimating him because if that's the case then there's some part that you don't know and you need to become acquainted I believe the people of God need to reacquaint themselves with their savior they need to reacquaint themselves with their savior who he is because it's not until you know your God those who know their God will do great exploits you'll never do anything great for the kingdom of God if you don't know who he is and so this week, I want to talk to you about never underestimating being faithful. I would like to submit to you this morning that faithfulness is something that is becoming more and more hard to find in this day and age that we live in. Faithfulness. When we talk about faithfulness, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about loyalty. We're talking about commitment. Faithful is, could be used as an adjective, ladies and gentlemen, to characterize uh, characterized by steadfast affection or allegiance, that I have uh, um, steadfast, that is continual uh, affection and allegiance to someone or something. But I, I really think it's very important because one of the words of the Lord that I gave for this year that the Lord told me to share is never underestimate being found faithful and how faithfulness can get you in places that unfaithfulness and, and, and no commitment will not be able to. I would like to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, all of us are faithful to something. And some of us are loyal to people to a fault. And some of us may be loyal to the wrong things and the wrong people. And I believe that in the time that we're living in, God is requiring the people of God and has always required, let me make that very clear, has always required for us to walk upright and faithful in, in true loyalty and true fidelity and commitment to him. He has not changed. 
since even the very beginning. His his commitment, he, he even to the point of putting uh, 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 Adam and Eve in the garden from the very day one. It was a test to see would they be loyal to the father? Would they be loyal to God or out of their own ambition? Will they eat of the tree? That you have everything that you couldn't that is known to man. You could eat anything. You just can't eat that tree. You just can't eat from what's on that tree. Because the moment you eat of that, you eat of the tree of the good of, uh, of the knowledge of good and evil. You did not need to eat of that. That was a test of where one's fidelity and loyalty is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to submit to you that as the world gets darker and as things around us, it can it's not always life events that changes us. But sometimes uh, remaining faithful for some will be a challenge. And what I'm saying to you, uh, you and I speaking to myself, you have to remain faithful, because if you do not remain faithful, you will get outside of the will of God. And things will become challenging for you. I know there's a lot going on in our world. There's a lot not only going on in the world with the pandemic, but there's a lot that's going on in your life and in the lives of others that are around you. But the question is going to be, will you remain faithful? Will you remain faithful? Will God find you to be faithful? This is the key here. God is not looking for a perfect person. Mm -mm. God, my friend, is looking for a faithful person. I want you to hear me and hear me good that God is not looking for a perfect person. But he's looking for a faithful person. The reason why Abraham is the man of faith that we know today and the reason why God trusted Abraham because he was faithful. Not that he didn't lie. Not that he didn't, not that he didn't, that he had sex outside of the covenantal relationship with his wife. But he was faithful. And he was faithful to the point that even if he had to sacrifice his own son, that God would be able to raise him back up. Because he was loyal to God. And when you see all the people in scriptures that had their issues, the one thing that you can't take away from them is that they were loyal to the end. Yes, they had their flaws. Yes, they did commit certain acts of sin, but they were loyal to the end. God is not looking for a perfect person. He's looking for a faithful person, someone whom he can trust. And some of us start out well, but we don't end well. We start out being faithful. And here's why I know this, because Revelations 2 verse 10 tells us to be faithful until death. And see, if we're faithful until death, ladies and gentlemen, and that was talking about uh, uh, the, per, uh, the persecuted church in, that, in Revelations 2 there. But still, the same concept still remains. That if we stay faithful to the end, Jesus said that I will give you a crown of life. That I will give you a crown of life. You know how your crown of life is earned by faithfulness. We are saved by faith. Are you get what I'm saying? We're saved by grace through faith. Excuse me. We're saved by, by faith. We're saved by grace through faith. So I don't earn my salvation. My salvation has already been purchased through the blood of Jesus Christ. I just have to believe it. But in order for me to have my rewards, earn my rewards in heaven. In position in heaven, not my position to get there, but the position that because God is going to have certain things for people to do. Guess what? You're not going to just be, you know, doing. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hear me. In order for you to do that, you have to be faithful. Faithfulness, ladies and gentlemen, is an action word. It is not something that is passive. It's very something that is a verb. It's an action. It is something that we we it's not something we can talk about our faithfulness. To my wife, I can't just talk about how much I love her and how much I trust and I just adore her pretty self. I just can't do that. I have to show action behind my words. 
We just can't say, oh, I love God. I trust him. Oh, God. And then our actions are opposite. It don't work like that. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have now. Even look at your lives. It's hard to find loyal friends. People start off loyal when they think they can get something out of you. And that's how we are with God. People start off, oh, I was a believer. I believe God, all of this stuff. Until when they find that what God didn't do for them, now he's an evil one. I become an atheist. I become an agnostic. I don't want institutionalized anything. I don't believe there. And so we go to those extremes. We remain, we start out, but then we lose along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, here in our text, can I just give you a breakdown? So Pastor B, you went on through all of that. Why? Because we have an example of that here in this scripture. We have an example of someone who started out faithful, but didn't end in faithfulness. And, and, and listen, I really thought that this week that God was going to give me the word that if, if you're faithful over a few, I'm, he'll make you rule over many. And that's not really where I'm at. That's not really what God gave me. Because here's the thing. God ain't really talking about people can be loyal over stuff. But the truth of the matter is God is looking for true fidelity to him. Because some people will, will be faithful just so they can get the stuff and then be gone. But is that really real faithfulness? Is that true loyalty? No, 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 it's not. Because really, if you really trust God and if you really are loyal to him, the stuff that he puts, it, the stuff that he commits to you, you won't squander it because you have that type of faith that, that because your, you, you, your faith is so rooted in him. You're faithful, so you'll be faithful over what he's given you because you're truly faithful to him. This is what it's all about. I don't need to talk about him committing something into your hands because the truth of the matter is, if you really have, if you're really trying to be faithful to God, it don't matter what he put in your hands. You know that I'm going to do something with it because I love him. And because I love him. I do what I do. This is where you and I, TCF, need to get back to the place of. Not because what he does, I do what I do. Out of faithfulness. Because of who he is, I do what I do. Not because of what he does. But because of who he is, I do what I do. <laughs> Not over what, because it doesn't matter what he gives. You know, if you know who he is from last week's message and you know who he is, then you know you can be faithful to him. And if you know what he's done previously and even in times now, then you can still be faithful to him. The real test of all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is how will you remain faithful because things will happen. I'm not telling you that 2022 is a magical year. I'm not telling you that life will not, will not continue to go. I'm telling you it is. But I'm telling you, you cannot underestimate. You cannot place a too, too low of a value on being loyal and being faithful. Because the truth of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, those are the ones that you will see God bless. I'm not out here prophesying everybody going to get a blessing because they're not. God ain't blessing. He's no longer in the business of blessing those who don't, who profess false loyalty. He's never been in the blessing of that. And here in our text, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what's happening here. What's happening is, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a, a power struggle because after King Solomon died, Israel split up. There was the northern region that still remained Israel, and then there was a southern region that now became Judah, and that name comes from one of the tribes. It's Judah. Send Judah first. They were, you know, talk about who prays, but I got somewhere I want to go. And here we have ben Hadad. Excuse me. Here we have um, Asa, the king of Judah, and we have Basha, the king of Israel, are both at a power struggle at this moment. 
And here we have it that in this text, in the earlier verses, we see how uh, Basha, the king of Israel, got the better or the upper hand on Asa. In the sense that what he did, ladies and gentlemen, is that what he did was he built he build a, a, a road or, he, or they will say that he fortified a road. And what he did was is that he blocked the exit. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's what he did. So he he gained the upper hand and, and he effectively blocked the main road, the main route between uh, the, the, the main route into Judah at the city of Ramah. And, and so what he was hoping is that it would put enough pressure on Judah and that would force Asa into significant concessions that he would concede. That's what's happening here. And so with this, he's put, so this is really messing up some business for Judah. This is messing up business. This is messing up their economics. And, and, and so what he hoped is that this military and economic pressure on Judah would force them into concession. Fortifying Ramah was probably to prevent access to Jerusalem for religious or trade reasons. Ramah is usually identified Aram on the main road just five miles north of Jerusalem. And so because of this, this is what caused, watch me, Asa to then because of the pressure of this road being what it is, it caused him to concede, but not in the way that Basha wanted. I'm about to show you something right now, and I hope that you hear me and hear it is good. A lot of people are conceding and making bad alliances. <laughs> <laughs> They're making alliances that are not good. People are making alliances that are good because, oh, I'm in trouble. That's what it looks like, and that's what it is. It seems that we are in trouble here because of this pressure. And so what happened is, ladies and gentlemen, that Asa took some money from the house of the Lord. This is important. He took money from the house of the Lord to make a treaty with Ben-Hadad of Aram, or Syria. He uses the treasures to buy favor from the Syrian king, Ben-Hadad. Goes out of his way to make a treaty and say, hey, me and you need to make a treaty the same way you and my father made a treaty. Your father and my father made a treaty. We need to make a treaty. History repeating itself. King Asa's father was evil. And you made the same alliance with a person that don't even like you. <laughs> Syria and, and, and Israel always been at war. And you make a treaty with someone who don't care for you. This is what people are doing right now. People are making different alliances because you're tired of the pressure of raising your family alone. So let me get married till I know a person that's not good for me. I'm tired. I'm tired of, of these jobs doing what it's doing. Let me do something illegal that's going to help me get to where I need. My business is under pressure because of the inflation and all this that is increasing. Let me do something outside of the will of God. Here's the interesting thing. Put me here. Here's the interesting thing about this. This treaty did bring about success. Because when Ben Hadad, he heard it, he stopped what he was doing. So it looks like, and see, here's the thing. When sin seems successful and there was no, uh, from what we see, any, re, uh, any uh, consequences of it, then what we do is, okay, let me do some more. Why? Because it seemed like it went well. It seemed like this was a smart treaty because what happened is, is that Ben Hadad stopped what he was doing because he heard that Syria had got behind Asa. 
And so Asa feels like, wow, cool, we're going to use those rocks. We use those rocks and we're going to build something else out of what they tried to do against us. And so it seemed successful. But here's what he did. He made a treaty with a pagan king all because he fell under pressure because of what had happened, economic, military pressure, all of this stuff going on. And let me be honest, there are certain things that we do that are not always wise when we're under pressure. And what has happened from 2020 to now we're here in 2022 is that the church has been put under pressure. Not only the church, but the people of the generation that's living now has been placed under pressure. And people are making their own decisions without the consultation of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. Talking about the church. The world's going to do what they're going to do. We're talking about the church. He makes a decision that, is, that seems to be beneficial at the moment, but it's going to come back to hurt them. What I'm telling you, and God told me this this morning when I was getting this word together, God told me, Brandon, don't you talk about being faithful over a few because here's the thing. People, the, here's the real, uh, real deal is that people are making alliances and allegiances with demonic forces and other things that are not of me. And that is really why I'm saying that they don't, they bet not never underestimate being faithful because when they see everybody else or what I'm doing for the faithful, they're going going to regret the day that they made an allegiance out of pressure put in that chat section say don't make don't make stupid decisions because of pressure come on i, I know i said stupid put it in there so remind yourself pastor b don't make stupid decisions because of pressure because of pressure it calls him to come out of alliance and faithful to God and make an alliance with Ben Hadad, who were worse enemies than Israel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And yes, it seemed to be successful. It seemed to be successful. It seemed like this was the right move to make. Because when we see a thing prosper, and feel like, oh man, this was the whole thing. God was definitely behind that. But then there's when people come. Things which appear successful may be in the life of faith most disastrous. Because a lot of things that, oh, they, they weren't as faithful to you, God, but it seemed like they being successful. You, came, you become like Asaph. Like, why is the wicked prospering? It seems like that, but it's, it seems and it is happening. Yeah, I know that that other person ain't tithing like you. Yes, I know that you've been doing your thing. and being a, But there are some times where it seems like when your faith comes under pressure, when your fidelity comes under pressure, God ain't concerned about the others. He's concerned about what are you doing. And because we're tired of seeing other people get away with stuff and it seemed to be successful. That's what could be the most dangerous thing about faith when we see the wicked doing things that we know that is not right. Being, being success, successful at it and feeling like there is no repercussions for them. But you're not God. I'm not God. That could be one of the most biggest hindrances to faith and the reason why people get out of being faithful and say, all right, this ain't working. This faith thing, this Jesus thing ain't working because nobody's telling you the truth like I'm telling you on this line right now. What I'm telling you is, is they are being successful and it seems like they are. Yes, it's happening. But what God can do for you versus somebody who's wicked is far greater because the wicked will always see their day. <laughs> oh my God. Asaph said, It's not until I came into the sanctuary and I saw their doom. The truth of the matter is, is that at the end of the day, yes, let's be honest, it sucks. It sucks. Oh, it seemed like other people, and that can be a hindrance to your faith. 
And the reason why, well, let me just go out and step outside. Let me see what's going on. Let me just step outside and just see. Ooh, let me tap my foot in. And you tapping your foot. Yeah, it, well, God didn't come back with anything, so I guess I'm good. That's how we are. I guess this has got away with this one, Jesus. And no, you're not. Because guess who came to town? A seer named Hanani. Hanani, there is always, let me tell you something, God don't play when it comes down to his children. God will send someone or he will come himself to set some things straight. <laughs> yeah, I see you, Asa. You was out there in the streets. I see you. And it seemed like you got successful. But here's what you underestimated about making the wrong loyalty treaty to. You made a treaty to the wrong person instead of keeping your loyalty in the God of y'all salvation. <laughs> Hanani, ladies and gentlemen, tells him, he the seer, he came and said, because you relied on the king of Syria <laughs> and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the kings of Syria has escaped from your hand. Can I stop real here? The Holy Spirit gave me something just now. And guess what? The same thing would happen to Adam and Eve. They thought they were good until God came down. Wow. We don't know, ladies and gentlemen. We do not know how soon God came down to, to visit them in the cooler day. We do not know from the time of them eating, the, uh, eating of the tree that they were not supposed to eat from to the time when God came down to say, wait a second, what's going on? Adam, who told you to do what you were naked? They knew that they were in trouble the moment God came down. But they didn't know it instantly. <laughs> oh, and it seemed to be successful. And Asa and them boys seemed like they had gotten away. That thought that they made the right treaty, the right allegiance. And Hanani, the seer, tells them, listen. Because you relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Here's what the Lord told me. He told me this. Give him this. When we do not act in faith, we act foolishly. He tells them, because you have done this, you have allowed them to escape from your hands. You act foolish, Asa. This was a terrible idea. This was a terrible idea. And I'm telling you now, it may not seem like at the time it was terrible because he was under pressure. And some of you, I already hear you. I hear them, Lord. I, I hear them, Lord. Well, well, if God would have showed up a lot earlier for Asa, maybe he didn't have to make those decisions. Nah, because that's where the test of faith comes in. I hear you out there. I know you. I know. I know you saying that. Well, Pastor B, well, if God would have came through for me a lot sooner, maybe I wouldn't have acted foolishly. But where is the faith? That's my question. I don't know who I'm talking to. And I hear this so clearly because I know you saying it. I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Because the reality of it is not real faith then. Because it didn't show where you trusted God. <laughs> oh, come on in here. Because you have not relied on the Lord your God. You relied on the king of Syria. Well, Lord, I relied on that dude because he was helping to pay my bills. I got kids. I was relying on her because I got kids. I, 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 I'm trying not to get kicked. Oh, y'all don't want to have no church. Y'all don't want to be true. The reason why you make certain decisions because out of pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, there were times in my life where I thought that, oh, my God, what in the world? Let me tell you something. In the first year of our church, I'm like, how in the world we're going to survive? Things weren't coming in. God had to show me, you better trust me. Don't do nothing stupid. Don't do nothing stupid. Don't do nothing stupid. And we saw the hand of God move like never before. Now, was it hard to not be like, oh, God, 
because my personal finances were suffering because I'm trying to keep the church alive. I like that. See, y'all don't want this real. Y'all don't want this reality. You just want it already made. The truth of the matter is, Pastor B had to make some hard decisions. I had to make some life decisions. What am I gonna do? And I'm, I'm talking to all of you. Well, you got good parents and all that stuff. I'm coming for you jokers, too. Because the truth of the matter is, the reality is, is that while you may got good parents, they make you make the decisions. You the grown person. And you got to grow up. I wasn't enabled. I thank God for their graciousness. But still, at the end of the day, I had to learn how to figure it out. <laughs> And it was me and God just having to figure this thing out. Like, God, well, you got me out here when I'm, I need your help. But you don't make a treaty because at times it's going to look like, where is the help coming from? Where is it coming from? Well, the psalmist said, I will look to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, you relied on the king of Syria. I don't know who you I don't know who that person is or that thing is in your life. Some of you, you relied on your cannabis. You relied on these very things. You're, oh my God, you're the things that drive you to, to make treaties and alliances with those things. Because of pressure. And he's saying, listen, you've acted foolishly. Because you done made an alliance with somebody that's going to, that's not good. It's not good. You compromised. Here's what's happening with us, y'all. We're compromising. Because the compromise at the time seems like the right decision. Because of where, because of the predicament that we're in. And God is saying, where is my, where is your love for me here? Where is your trust for me? Where is your trust of my character that even if it seems bleak, that you would trust me to know that I will be there with you to the very end? Where is your trust for me to know that, listen, I've never forsaken you. I've never forsaken you. I've never, the psalmist said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging for bread. Oh, my God, where? Where is the trust for me when it comes down to my goodness? I would have fainted let I seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. God is saying, I want to show my goodness, but where is the faithfulness? He makes a treaty. He foolishly makes a decision to compromise. Because let me tell you something that sometimes... It seems like it's the only option. Oh, can we be truthful? Am I the only one who feels that sometimes compromise seems like the only option? Because you under, under you underestimate what holding on to God will do for you if you just wait on the Lord. Oh my God. If you just wait, he makes a decision makes a decision we go so much in panic where we lose faith and this is why Hanani had to remember him he was like listen were the Ethiopians and the Lubim not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen yet because you relied on the Lord he delivered them into your hand the seer had to tell him, remember when the Ethiopians and the Lubim, they had huge armies and God came for you then, eh? So when you trusted him then, why would you go out and compromise yourself like this? I was going to give you the victory not only over Israel, but also Syria. But you lost it because you compromised. And you are lose some of you don't mind. This is where the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to compromise so you can lose it. 
Oh, but look at somebody say, I'm going to put it in the chat section. Say, I can't lose it. I got to remain faithful. I can't lose it. Some of you are on the very verge of seeing God break through like never before. But Lord, my God, put it in that chat section and encourage your neighbor in the Lord. Say, don't lose it now. Hallelujah. When I remembered, how would I? Oh my God, he said, when I recount it, when I think you, you have to understand, you can't lose your memory and get amnesia when pressure's on. Hallelujah. You can't get amnesia when the pressure's on. You got to be faithful to the end. You can't lose amnesia, y'all. You, you can't you can't have an easy. He said, didn't I? Didn't the Lord, because you relied on the Lord in that moment, because you relied on the Lord, then he gave you victory over the, the over those huge obstacles and those armies that were in your. He gave you victory. Then why would you make a decision now? Because of what Ben Hadad, because, excuse me, because of what King of Basha did in Israel. Why do that now? Why? I gave you victory then. Because, and because of this, you acted foolishly. He said, that was foolish. That was foolish of you. Oh, I know you. Is God calling me foolish? Yes! He's calling the act of what you did foolish. I know you want to hear a message of God. He does this, does all these perfect. I know you don't want to hear this, but this is why your faith is being tested now because you don't really believe this. The truth of the matter is God is saying to all of us, listen, why make a treaty with somebody else when you got the real thing right here? Why step out of your marriage when you got the real thing right here? Why step in and try to do things outside of me when I've been helping you all this time? Why now? Why now? You know what? We was going, we've been going through this building process, and I'm telling you, I've been having to resist making stupid decisions outside because of my own personal, that type of thing in, in Pastor B that said, all right, I'm about to take this thing over. Forget all of this. You know what I'm saying? We about to see. Oh, no. And God said, I'm the real one. You got to trust me with the time, Brandon. You got you to gotta trust me with the time. You got to know that what I'm doing, you've had me lead you this whole time. Why stop now? Somebody needs to hear this right now. Somebody needs to know this is what God is saying to you. You, I've been with you this whole time. Why stop now? Why stop now? Why not? Why stop now? This is humility. It's understanding I don't know it all. And this is scary. I'm going to not stop now trusting you. I'm going to hold on. Even if it's holding on to dear life, I know you will come through. Here it is. Here it is. In verse 9. In verse 9, he, he says something that's so profound this year. He says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly, therefore from now on you shall have wars. It's right there. It's on the screen. This is what it is. Can I give you this one? When we do not remain faithful, we miss opportunities of God's goodness. When we do not remain faithful, you lose the opportunity of God's goodness. Here it is, verse 9. He, the seer, the prophet, the man of God, Hanani says to him, he says, for the eyes of the Lord goes to and fro. 
throughout the whole earth, throughout the whole world, not just to you, throughout the whole world to see, to show himself strong. (laughs) God wants to show himself strong to you. He wants to come through for you. But God is saying, I'm looking for those who are loyal. Uh, I'm looking for those who will trust me with their whole heart and not lean on their own understanding. I'm looking, I'm searching the earth, and I'm trying to find where is my church? Where is the bride who is going to be loyal to the end? Where are they? Because he's saying, those people, those people right there, I'm going to show myself strong. I'm going to reveal my goodness strong. I'm going to be their protector. I want to see them. Those are the ones I'm looking for. TCF, what I'm telling you and what I'm telling all of us, again, I'm telling myself too, is that God is looking for people who will be loyal to him that he could show himself strong oh my god and i just want to be one i don't want our church to be the ones that are disloyal i want us to be a people that are loyal to the end that put our faith in him to the point where god show yourself strong i don't care if it's the last second i don't care if it's the last minute i know that you're gonna show yourself strong here i know that you will make a way here i know that you are working it out right here Because you look and you seek out to do it. This is the type of God we serve. This is the type of God we should honor. This is the type of God that even when we are faithless, he is faithful. He cannot deny himself because that's how faithful he is. And God is saying, I'm looking for those who can ride or die like I will ride or die. Because he already did. Oh my God. Ah, Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah right there. God is looking. He's looking to show himself strong. And you're missing the opportunity for God to stand up in that situation. So that we could boast on our God. And say, we remember when God stood up for us at 10830 Guilford Road. When it seemed like we were were never going to get to the building. But God stood up for us then. I remember in 2017 that God stood up for us. That even we made it a whole year without having to go late on nobody's payments. I remember from 2017 to now. We've never missed anything. Never been late on nothing. I remember that. And if God stood up then where it seemed like it shouldn't have been possible. He will stand up now. Hallelujah, you will not have no greater advocate than God. You will have no no greater advocate than God. You will have no greater person that will go on your behalf. Oh my God, the Bible says that, oh my goodness, he's gone before us, making every cooking place straight. Oh my goodness, God has already gone. There will be nobody who's your better defense system than Jesus. Oh my God, I gotta go. I'm getting out of here now, but I feel good. I ain't planning to preach like this. The reality of the matter is, God is looking to, f- to be faithful to someone, but will, will you? Don't underestimate faithfulness because why? Because God was about to give him the favor that they needed. God was about to give him the victory that he needed. But because he made an allegiance with the wrong person. Ah, God said, no, you going to have endless wars. You will not have peace. The reason why you didn't, that alliance is going to bring back, oh my God, it's going to come back on you. And you will always be at war. You will not have any peace because you got outside of reliance on God and the reason why your peace is disturbed now because you don't you're not aligned you're wasting your time on things that are not and you're relying on that that's what's going to be the thing to do that's what's going to do and God said no it ain't any other thing it's me it's me it's him God he will do it 
And he's looking for somebody to be faithful to. To show, he says his eyes go from to and fro. He scatters, he searches all throughout the earth, seeing who he can show himself to. Man, I'm believing God for some crazy things. Some things that I know that is beyond me. Things for my family that I know that is beyond even what I have in my accounts. But I know for one thing that God will show himself strong. Oh my God in here. TCF, I'm believing for your life. I'm believing some things that you probably won't even believe for yourself that God will do in your life. But if you look for somebody who, who, who will be faithful to the end, who will be faithful? Are you loyal or are you disloyal? Where's your loyalty at? Because wherever your loyalty is at, don't pray to God if you ain't loyal. If, you go, if you're not going to give that thing to him, if you're really not going to trust him, don't talk that loyalty stuff to God. Because your heart will always will go on full display. Don't you do that. God is looking for, don't, if you're going to pray to me, be loyal. If you're going to pray to me, really trust me. You got that access. You can do that. But it's up to you. Don't pray in one breath and then be disloyal in the next. This is where we are right now. This is where God is saying, TCF, where's your faithfulness? Because if you're really faithful, you'll be faithful to the work I put in your hands. TCF, we got a lot of stuff to do this year. And in this decade, this decade alone, it's the decade of the horizon. It's the decade where God brings you out of the shadows and places us into the forefront. But God ain't going to do it unless he know he got some faithful people. And you're underestimating what being faithful is because let me tell you something. If Asa would have just relied on God, he underestimated what God would do because of his faithfulness. <laughs> And if you would have just relied, if you would just rely on God, don't you underestimate what God will do with someone who's just saying, listen, Lord, I'm loyal. Do what you, I, I, I know this is looking crazy right now, but you will. You, let me tell you something. You will see God move like never before in your life just because someone was faithful. Just because of faithfulness. Just because of faithfulness, I'm coming to a close. Mm. And even in this message, what makes it sobering for me is coming to the reality of this truth. And the truth is, don't forsake your relationship with God for what may seem to be a momentary fix that will have a long-term a negative effect on your life. And this is what people are doing. In the moment, that seemed like the right decision. But he lost the battle to his biggest enemy, which is Syria, all because of his decision in the moment that may have seemed right and that seemed successful. My thing to you is, please, Brandon, don't do it. Don't you forsake. Brittany, don't do it. Don't forsake. EP, don't forsake. Those of you watch, don't you forsake. Don't forsake your relationship with God. Your faith to him, your loyalty, your fidelity. Because of pressure. Because what may seem right will have devastating consequences in the end. And yes, God is merciful, but it does not take away from the consequence of, of getting out of relying on him for the sake of what may seem momentary. Because what is momentary is fading. But true trust in God has eternal consequences that are of good reward. And your faithfulness, you relying on him will not go unrewarded. Because if you truly have and rely on God, 
you will rely that what he's put in your hands, you will do because who he is, I do what I do because of who he is. Come on and give God a praise where you are. Come on, put them clamp. If you receive that word, type amen in the chat section. There. Listen, I want you to make a, a true allegiance with the true living God at this moment if you're not saved. I offer you Jesus Christ in this moment. He came that he may give life, give you new, brand new life. Not a life on the old, new life on the old, but a completely new life. That if any man be born in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I want you to come to Jesus. He died because guess what? You and I were ratchet, no good for nothing. But guess what? He died to save us from ourselves and to give us a hope in a new living way. I want to give you this hope right now. I want to give you this hope right now. If you have made an allegiance outside of God, he wants you to come back home. Rededicate your life to Christ right now. No matter what you've done, listen to me. Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day when you get back in alignment with God. Today is the day. Don't let another day go in your shame and condemnation. Today is the day. Let's get it right today. God is merciful. He's forgiving. If you want to become a partner of TCF, you can do that. You can become a partner of TCF. It don't matter where you live. We pastor everyone. We, we pray requests. We talk with you. Listen, we want to pastor you. My wife and I would love the privilege. What would love the privilege? We'll love the privilege. Listen, if you're not saved, I want you to say this with me right now. Don't you, don't you not listen to the trick of the enemy. You listen right now. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I acknowledge, I repent of my sin. I realize I made treaties outside of you. And I'm coming back to you, Lord, today. I recognize that you died on the cross, that you were buried, that you rose again, and that you ascended to the right hand of the Father just for me. And today I'm making you the Lord over my life. Wash me clean and make me new. In Jesus' name. Today. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, I believe that you're saved, that you're saved. Come on and rejoice. Stay right there. Man. 